Welcome to Home Dad Chat, brought to you by the National At Home Dad Network. My name is Brock. My name is Danny. And we are here to talk about life as stay at home dad. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. No, I don't want much. I even love handmade crafts made of macaroni. Come on now, you should know me. Sometimes I might eat too much. No worry about my weight, got the dad bod rocking on me. Sketches on my feet, cargo shorts look good on me. I'm a dad, that's what I do. Hey everybody, welcome back to Home Dad Chat. Uh, it's great to uh, have you here uh, to listen to uh, Danny and I uh, go back and forth just talking about uh, whatever is going on. And, and tonight is definitely a whatever show. Uh, we're just catching up and uh, it's been kind of a crazy couple of weeks. And so we'll talk a little bit about um, the past couple of episodes and uh, just the fun we've had with talking to some different guys and uh, just uh, what's been going on within the past couple of weeks because it's uh, been a bit of a whirlwind in some ways. So uh, but yeah, we're glad you're here. And so I hope you all enjoy the show. Danny, it's good to good to see you, man. I, it's it's been a couple of weeks. Uh, how you been? Yeah, yeah, been definitely a couple weeks. Uh, last week was spring break for us, and um, all the kids home all the time. We didn't do um, a lot as far as we didn't go to the beach or anything like that. Uh, just because COVID, we still kind of uh, still still staying home, but we definitely were outside almost every single day. Um, and here in Georgia, that's it's truly spring. So all the plants are blooming and the sun's shining. It was 82 degrees this afternoon. And nice. it was, it was good. Yeah. We, I mean, just simple things. I got to tell you a, a water hose and four kids and you have a good time. Somebody's going to end up crying. Somebody will end up crying because they got splashed too much or didn't get the hose or whatever. But other than that, everybody will have a good time, good memories, at least a few years from now in therapy, they'll be laughing about it. So yeah, it was good. Had a good weekend or a good week, I should say. How about I you? Even, I couldn't even imagine. I, I, it's been good, but I, I I could not imagine having a water hose out in April. I that just boggles my <laughs> mind, honestly. Like, and and anybody else who's listening that's in any kind of cold weather or coming up out of the cold is probably going, "Are you kidding me? Like, are you making your children into snowmen?" But that's the joys of living down in the south. So, yeah, uh, you know that's pretty nice. Uh, no, I've been good. Um, so let's see. So two weeks ago, I was back home for my grandfather's funeral uh, when you were yep. talking to Sergio. And so getting to listen to that episode while I edited it was awesome and made me want to be there that much more and sad that I wasn't. Uh, but uh, definitely getting to hear you guys talk about cigars. I just wanted to go buy like a case of them afterwards because I was just <laughs> like, oh my gosh, it was so much fun listening to that conversation. And man, that dude has just got so much knowledge. He is the man. Ridiculous. He just, it was, it was very impressive. I mean, just the cigars that he had with him were enough, but just his knowledge, <laughs> the etiquette, how to smoke, when, you know, when to smoke, why to cut it a certain way, just all sorts of stuff. It was yeah. amazing. Well, and that's an episode and that episode in particular is a, you got to watch it episode on the YouTube channel, because mm -hmm. he, like you said, he, he shows off the stuff that he's got and things like that. So uh, definitely. So yeah, so I missed out on that. Uh, we had spring break before that week. Um, and then coming back, like just the whole, like getting back in the swing of things. And it was like Easter and, um, you know, we got the, I got the episode out of you and Sergio. And then this past one, I wasn't able to get one out just because this timing didn't work out. Like, you know, you had spring break. I was trying to catch up on so much stuff with, uh, yeah. dad con and, uh, just organization stuff. It was just, it was nuts. And and in the process of it, like I ended up uh, having a bit of a like mental meltdown of just not being able to function very well yesterday. And so, uh -huh. um, yeah, it was, it was weird. Um, probably the first time in a very long time that I've felt like that. Um, and with being on like the, the meds that I'm on, that's something that's supposed to help or prevent that. And it just, it was so gloomy outside and there was just mm -hmm. so much heavy going on with just all the stuff to do. I just couldn't snap out of it. Um, and so it took a lot of conversation with my wife and just trying to take some time to do some other things like mow the yard and whatnot to just clear my head. So yeah, it was, it was a bit of a struggle yesterday. <laughs> no, I'm sorry to hear that, but I'm glad you, you know, have the things in place you need to, to get yourself through that. Definitely. That's good I, that's, to hear. 
that's uh it's important you know you got to have your coping mechanisms and you got to have your things that mm-hmm. help push you through the push you through the fog and uh, and, and your self care man yep. self care always self care that's my thing so yep. so, <laughs> oh, so, exactly all were, that up. so all those things were good so that's that's pretty much what was going on uh the other mm-hmm. thing i've been doing it's been kind of fun so i've been toying around with tiktok um and mm-hmm. i actually uh i've gotten the hang of it i've starting to build my audience and it's been cool because uh, I'll talk about beer. I'll talk about bourbon. Uh, I talk about gardening out here. Uh, just anything having to do with like what's going on in my life and fatherhood and being a stay at home dad. And it's been really cool. Like the, ex- like the people that have been watching, it's like not the juvenile side of TikTok at all. It's like the adults who are like, Hey, like we just want to hang out with other like-minded people and like have a good time. And so it's, it's been really neat, but yeah, that's, so that's the other thing I've been doing here lately. And cool. it's actually lots of fun. Uh, it's, it's mm-hmm. been pretty, it's been pretty neat. I'm really big into bourbon. And so it's been really educational to learn a lot from a lot of people who have bourbon collections that I will never attain, <laughs> like just insane amounts nice. of bottles, but it's cool to hear through, them talk about it. Through Tic Tac, Tic, Tic Tac. Oh, I'm an idiot. Tic Tac. <laughs> yeah. All through I swear I know all through Tic Tac. <laughs> Old people. It's all good. Yeah, it's all, through, it's all through TikTok. So yeah, like tonight nice. I poured my, tonight yeah. I poured myself a '94 proof small batch uh, Larceny from the old mm-hmm. Fitzgerald company. It's delicious. So mm-hmm. it's yeah, one of my go before. one of my go to daily drinkers. So I like that. Um, uh, but okay, so but are you dancing? I'm done. No, no, not dancing. No, no dancing because you know it, it's it's basically started out for dancing and. Yeah, I mean, we, I'd leave that to I leave that to all the youngins that are out there. You know, like, <laughs> I'm I'm good. You you'd be amazed at uh, the the bourbon community that's on there. It's there. It's insane, honestly. And they're all pushing to like get to a thousand followers because that's when the live portion of TikTok opens up where you can do live streaming. And so you get different people who are like, oh, we got to get so and so to a thousand. And it's just such a neat community. It just reminds me so much of like what goes on within like the stay at home dad realm of just supporting yeah, yeah. other dads and what's going on. So yeah, it's, it's fun. I, uh, I truly do enjoy it and it's totally not like anything I thought it was going to be on there. So, which I'm very, ex- I'm very happy with cause I didn't mm-hmm. want it to be anything like that. So, and their algorithm actually picks up really quickly too. Like, Oh, they're not interested in this, but they're very interested in these things. And so you stop seeing some of the like crazy stuff get posted out there and you mm-hmm. see the stuff that you're more interested in. So that's pretty cool too. Cool. Uh, yeah. Um, so are you going to, are you going to give us your, is it a handle? Is it a IGN? What is it? What is it called? On yeah. TikTok? Yeah. There's a handle. Uh, my handle is uh, a Cincinnati or sorry, a Cincy dad is, is my handle. So I had it at one other thing, one other time, and it just didn't work out very well. So I changed it. So it's just a Cincy dad mm-hmm. um, with, I think it's an underscore. So it's like a underscore Cincy underscore dad. So, yeah. All right. All, all our listeners go out there and find Brock dancing. Cause you know, there's a video of him dancing. Out I'm there. definitely not dancing. It's a TikTok is all about dancing. <laughs> you guys know this. He says bourbon, but what happens after the bourbon? You, you, you find you find one of me dancing and I will owe you a drink at home dad <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord uh, yeah well and so yeah so the other thing too is it's gonna bring so I, I was telling you about this beforehand I, I'm wearing a very special hat so if you're watching you actually get to see this hat so I've got like um, it's basically I call them newsy hats uh, I've heard other people call them cabby hats um, I think the more like newer term of them is like a peaky blinder hat. <laughs> it's, it's, it's that style. It just doesn't have the razor blade in it. Um, the pakey blinders. The pakey blinders. Yeah. yeah. Love that. An shirt. Irish flat cap. That's what I call it. That works too. Yeah. It's a flat it's cap. Stuff. But anyway. But anyway, this is actually my grandfather's hat. Uh, my grandfather just passed away. Um, I ended up, was able to collect a couple of his hats. Um, so I've got a more of a formal style, not fedora really, but um, like a, almost like a news person you know like you see like them wear with like the little like press mm-hmm. it's, only it's got like a really cool feather in it and then i've got this one which is more for casual wear uh that i enjoy wearing pretty frequently so um, i've had it for about a year actually but i thought i'd wear it tonight since uh it's mm-hmm. been since then since i've been on the show so yeah so just a little special homage to my my grandfather he was 93 so he was and he was quite the spry funny guy yeah 
I came back with his uh, Santa Claus costume, actually. Nice. So, yeah. So that was the one thing that was given to me when I went up there. My uncle was like, mm-hmm. here, you're doing Santa Claus. Like here, you take grandpa's suit and carry on the tradition. And I'm like, awesome. Nice. And the yeah. pastor really was doing like the eulogy was like, I came up and talked and everything. And, and afterwards, uh, as I was walking back, the pastor's like, yeah, but Brock's going to have to put on a few pounds if he's going to fill that thing out. And my wife was like, not if I have anything to say about it. <laughs> <laughs> you put a pillow in there, fake it. <laughs> totally. Yeah. That's exactly what's going to happen. It's going to be totally a pillow. So yeah. But no, man, I mean, it's uh, so it's been good. Um, what did you guys do for spring break? Were you just around the house? Did you guys go somewhere? Uh, mainly just around the house. We, um, yeah. uh, we have a huge, huge amount of pollen out right now and all through the last uh last two weeks really it's been uh, you go out on the front porch and there is literally a layer of yellow dust um so it 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 uh it hits me kind of hard so i can't really stay outside for too long i, I wear a mask I, it's kind of stupid but i wear around in my yard to try, to try to keep it out so but we uh we mainly stayed home we went out one time um and uh it was just because spring break should be something in my mind. It should be an event of some kind. Now, I my preference would be, hey, let's all go to the beach. Any beach, anywhere, you know, uh, the the East Coast is probably six hours from us. That's some nothing. Beach somewhere, you know. Yep, there you go. Some <laughs> beach, yeah, and just head on out, you know. And um, but since we couldn't, what I did is I took all the kids to the store um, at about nine o'clock in the morning. And normally on a weekday, nine o'clock in the morning, there's very very few people there. And um, I made the 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 stipulation that if we get there and the parking lots like a quarter full or more, we're not going inside because there's too many people. And they were all fine with that, which I was thought was very mature of them. Um, but basically, I went in and. I I just let them buy all of the snacks, basically, whatever they, you know, not whatever. I shouldn't say we're going to go crazy, but I said, well, I'm, we're going to do a fire. Let's do a cookout. So we're going to get, let's just get some hot dogs. And then I let the kids start suggesting, oh, you know, s'mores would be good. Um, and so we just kind of went from there. Now for us, by the way, I do s'mores, a fudge striped cookie with a marshmallow. I don't do the graham cracker and chocolate. With a marshmallow. That sounds amazing. Yeah, they're, they're pretty good. Yeah, you can even, if you need to, you can make them inside. If it's too cold to go outside, you can make them on the stovetop or whatever else. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but we went out and like they each got their own can of Pringles um, because we don't have chips very often. And one of the things that I really dislike uh, is when one kid gets a snack and the other kid doesn't. And so you end up them kind of either feeling bad or griping at each other or just straight up fighting each other. Um, So I said, okay, look, I don't want to share chips. Just uh, here's the Pringles and the Pringles honestly were the cheapest uh, other than like a bag of really bad tortilla chips. So it was like Pringles is a dollar, dollar 25, something like that. You each get one, just pick your flavor. That's your thing. And um, so that and ice cream and what have you, and then went home and, you know, started a little fire out, you know, over in the, the, the fire pit beside the house and made s'mores and ate chips and hot dogs and nobody got sick. So I call that a win. So that's awesome. Yeah, no, yeah. that's cool. I, I saw something very similar to that. Uh, I think it was on TikTok actually a mom took his two, took her two uh, boys to, uh, I think it was dollar general or something like that and said, whatever you can fit in your hands, and get to the cash register is yours. Like, I think it was a spring break thing. These wow, kids cool. were very smart. Yeah. And they completely outwitted their mom immediately <laughs> because whatever you fit in your hand, right? First thing you go for is a bucket. A bucket. <laughs> yep, yep. That was and where I went. <laughs> and that's exactly the oldest found it first like on an end cap and was like, Ooh, a bucket. And then like the youngest was like, Oh, you're smart. And he grabbed one too. And man, they filled those things full. And you just, the mom's look on her face was like, Ooh, I've, I've, I've been out with it. It's, it's all now. <laughs> it was awesome. Mistakes though. were made. Oh, it was great. But I mean, what, what a cool idea though. I mean, I love the mm-hmm. fact that you're, you know, you're coming up with ways to try to make spring break uh, fun and interesting during this insane time where, maybe some things aren't so fun. So uh, kudos to you, man. I have a little easier though. I got four kids. So like even a water balloon fight. I mean, if you think about it, if, if, even if your kids, let's say your kids were maybe eight or 10 years older, maybe not that old, but you know, uh, say they were early teens, a water balloon fight could be fun. 
you know, because they're old enough to aim, they're old enough to, to bean you, you're old, they're old enough to take a shot. Oh, you trust know, me, my, they... my eight-year-old and five-year-old have very good accuracy. <laughs> <laughs> well, with us, that's kind of what it is. So we get out in the yard, and and I really hate water balloon fights because it leaves water balloons everywhere. But um, it's just such a blast. It's so much easier because, especially when they team up. Um, and it's oh, yeah. never me on a team. They always, it's, you know, the, either the, the oldest and the youngest and the middle two get, you know, they're, they're two teams against me, you know, or whatever it is. Um, and then almost every single time somebody will flip like halfway through it and they'll be like, you know, you hit dad pretty hard with that one smash and then <laughs> it's just utter chaos. So, but it's, it's a little bit easier because they have each other to, uh, play off of and team up with. So, you know, even a, sitting around the campfire having s'mores can even be a good you know better time i think because there's so many of them so yeah no, that's cool man definitely i for for our spring break i don't know if we did a whole lot oh we went to i know like the last the last day of spring break we um we went to the zoo my wife took off of work a little bit early and uh you have to have like a reservation and whatnot to go but we ended up going to the zoo and it was fun because they've got a kangaroo enclosure and All right you basically they walk right up to them and i mean they'll if you're not careful like they'll hop right into you um, i've actually mm-hmm. seen video where like it almost like one of the kangaroos almost knocked over a little girl because she wasn't paying attention that kangaroo's like i'm going over there and i don't care if you get out of my way or not like mm-hmm. i'll barrel you over so it was cool to get like up close i actually got the i actually uh, videoed uh the kangaroos fighting i've got that on my phone i might have to put that on here so people can see it because it's pretty uh it's pretty cool uh watching these two kangaroos duke it out um, and it's, it's mating season, but they don't have any females in there. So they're just like, <laughs> like their testosterone just takes over. <laughs> like, I'm going to beat you up. So, uh, so that was fun to watch, but that's what we ended. That's, that was really the majority of what we did. Other than that, it was like watching movies and just, you know, goofing around here at the house. It wasn't super mm-hmm. warm for our spring break. So that's, that's the well, reason. Speaking of movies, since we're not really on topic with any specific topic. So my, my yeah. boys, uh, 11 and eight, um, they were, uh, I did watch something on, um, aliens or something like that. And, um, like extraterrestrial rules, not aliens, a movie, um, and said, dad, we really want to watch a movie about xenomorphs. And I went, Oh, really? Now, what are those? <laughs> if you if, no, I know, but I was going to say, know. since you probably no don't know, it's, it's sci fi geek here. So, xenomorphs are the alien creatures, basically, from the movie Alien, Aliens, Alien Covenant, or whatever it was. Oh, all okay. of those with, um, yeah, I want to say her name wrong, Sigourney but uh, Weaver. Ripley, yeah, Sigourney Weaver, Weaver as Ripley, and uh, her just being a total BA throughout the whole thing. Um, and I, I will say, I saw the first one. I think in the theater or shortly thereafter, yeah. um, maybe on HBO or Cinemax or something awful after that on cable, <laughs> but uh, it scared the bejesus out of me because it was at the time an incredibly scary movie. Oh, yeah. Now it's nothing. I mean, I don't mean this bad about, you know, like, but special effects are so much better now oh, yeah. in, the, in the movies that you oh, see yeah. on a regular basis. And there are so many jokes and memes and uh, probably TikToks about xenomorphs and face huggers and things ripping out of your chest because little aliens or whatever that, right. that my boys even in my eldest too, she's, she's over everything. She's for, you know, teenagers, she's like on everything. But, um, I said, all right, well, we're going to watch it early. So you don't get scared, you know, so that if it is scary, it's not dark when the movie's over and we'll see how we do. And they watched alien, which is from 76 or something. No, had to be later than that. Whatever, you know, whatever year it came out and it was nothing. I mean, they were calling out who was going to die next. They were calling out how they were going to die because it was so, yeah, you know, it's, in kind of, it's predictable 30, 40 years later. Yeah. It's just so predictable. But yeah. at the time, you know, there was a lot of jump scares and what have you. And, um, I did get them both on a couple of the jump scares because I knew they were coming. They knew they were coming, <laughs> but they weren't prepared for me to grab their legs. You know? Oh yeah. There so you something go. would run and, I'm like, ah, and they're like, Dad, stop it. <laughs> I'm like, what man? You said you weren't scared, but they didn't hardly blinked didn't have any problem with it so we watched that one and then we watched the second one aliens yeah. um 
which was one of my favorites because of the drop ship in it and because of the Marines in it, which is awesome. And then uh, the big uh, loading mech that she gets into. I don't know if you remember, but it's a construction mech that she ends up at the end. It's um, been spoilers, so long since I've even you know, watched any of them. So it's, it's just basically a big you know, mech suit that you get into to move cargo around and what have you. And oh, she okay. uses it to kill the alien queen at the end, you know, okay. to push her out into space or whatever. Um, so anyway, I was geeking out all over that. I was loving it. And the boys <laughs> were like, yeah, that's cool. Do they get scary? I'm like, man, that was scary. That was look at all the people dying. This is this is <laughs> nah, nah, dad. Nah, they didn't really die. Look at that. It's so fake. How they oh, why would you even think that happened? So um, but it was really, really funny that they wanted to see it and that they knew that they mm. were called xenomorphs. Um, and again, because sci-fi and popular culture have made them so common that you'll see xenomorphs in, in Minecraft, even. You know, oh, with a mod, funny. you'll have a mod. And it's like, what, what is a face hugger doing in here? Oh, dad, it's just a mod. It's no big deal. And I'm like, wow. Wow. One of the scariest things in my childhood. Well, you're going to put first, it as a Minecraft mod. <laughs> the, I think one of the first, because I, I know that I didn't watch Alien before this, but I think uh, watching Spaceballs and like seeing the the little yes. Xeno come out of the guy's chest in the bar or in right. the in the diner right. or whatever. Like, I was like, what uh -huh. is this? And they're like, oh, hello, my baby. Hello, my yeah. daughter. And which which I think off. the majority of the people in there either were from the actual cast of Alien or they were just really good lookalikes, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. So, because oh, cool. But that was, yeah, there was, yeah, there's a spoof in there where he like eats like some sort of soup or something like that and it comes out yeah. like, what did he have and they're like i'll take the soup or something <laughs> but yeah, yeah so the I, special yeah the special that's what it was um so yeah it's that's cool though i that's the one thing that's where i'm at right now with movies and my kids is i want to watch certain movies with them but i'm like mm -hmm. there's no way they're of age for this yet and so that's been yeah. really difficult because like my yeah. kid got freaked out over harry potter about i think after episode after the second one uh, or no, the third one, when the Dementors showed up, mm -hmm. um, he was kind of not too cool with that. And so we just sort of backed away from any of that for a while. And I'm bummed because there, there's some really good movies. Like I wanted them to be able to watch with me. I'm just like, well, that's not going to happen now. Like we watched, yeah. um, they like watching roller coaster movie or roller coaster videos on YouTube, um, which are oh, fun. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. there, there are the actual like point of view ones that are from like real roller coasters. And then there are the ones that are computer generated that people put on there. And we watched one the other day where uh, it's basically the entire movie of Ghostbusters in like 12 minutes. Um, and it's all done to a roller coaster. It was really, it was really cool. I mean, <laughs> ah, the audio awesome. is, the audio is there, the different lines for uh, different parts of it are there, like the main scenes, like they, like the big main scenes they have like sections and I'm watching it with the kids and I'm really enjoying it. Cause I'm like, man, this is the movie, one of the movies I really wanted to watch with them. I thought they'd really find it funny. And we get almost all the way through it. And I'm like, Hey buddy, like, what do you think of this? I was like, you know, I was like, this is an actual movie. Like, you know, this is one of my one of my favorite movies and he's like i don't want to watch this <laughs> he's like he's like this is cool he's this... like but i don't want to watch the movie and i'm like okay so i, I know where we'll we are wait. right now we're not watching <laughs> yeah. gremlins for a while we're not watching yeah this. sad sad yeah i was like well we got a few years we'll see how we'll, we'll play it out i mean he's only eight so we, we got time mm -hmm. yeah yeah and everybody develops like at their own speed too i mean i've yeah. got i don't want to say which one of my kids but they're old enough to not be afraid of the dark but they are they yeah. just are. And it just, and, and I will say for me, I've never been one to force my kid through a fear. You know, I think personally, the way I look at my children, I think they've been better off if I let them progress through it on their own. Mm -hmm. um, you know, not to give them my own fears, of course, but also not to like be like, oh, well, you're afraid of the dark. Well, let's go stand outside for a little while. Then we'll see how afraid you are. Oh, no, I'm going to be petrified. Why would I do that? You know, um, <laughs> and it seems to have worked out pretty well because the things that they've gone through and gotten over it's been amazing what they can deal with after they figured out how to deal with that fear so yeah uh, but anyway that's cool so. i was i i can't say the same i was definitely forced out of a fear when i was a kid mm -hmm. uh, i had a fear of heights and uh we would always go to uh a, well we'd always come down here to cincinnati to king's island because it was a few hours to get down here and ride different roller coasters and there were some that i would ride i was fine with or whatever but then there was one time where like I was a old, 
gosh, I think I was like right around 13 or something like that. And my dad basically turned to me and said, if you don't ride these big roller coasters with us, you're not coming with us anymore. And I was like, oh crap. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like what an ultimatum. Uh, right. I guess I'm getting on this big roller coaster with a loop in it right now. Let's see how this goes. I hope I don't die. Uh, you right, know, kind of right. deal. And I, I got on and sure enough, like I went, I went down and, and did the whole thing and got off of it. And I was, my dad's like, how was that? I was like, it was really scary, but let's go do it again. You know? And like, at that point I was, I was set and have ridden many a roller coaster since then. Cool. So, well, I'm glad it pushed you through it. That's awesome. Yeah. It was, it was just kind of like one of those deals where, I don't know, for whatever reason I was just holding on to it. But the only thing I had a real fear of what, like from that though, was like just getting up on ladders and like high stuff like that. It took a little bit. And then I got into like doing construction and roofing with my yeah. family and that'll break it real quick too. And you're like, I just want to be up here helping you. Well, you got to get up here on this high roof. That's right. right. You got to yeah. be on the roof. <laughs> and so, yeah, you just kind of work through it. So it, you're either going to do it or you're not. So that's, that's pretty much mm-hmm. what I did, but. Well, yeah. and learning too, that fear is a part of your, of who you are. It's a part of, you know, yourself and it's fine. It's good. It's, it's there for a reason. You don't, you know, you don't have to back away from it. Yeah. You can face it. You know, you can look at it and go, Oh, well, I'm afraid of this. Well, I need to do this thing anyway. And I think my, the most famous quote that I can think of is that John Wayne had said that that's what bravery is. It's yeah. being afraid and doing the job anyway, yeah. you know, and I'm but, just, you know, all over that. But again, and I'm, when I'm you're a, ready. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, a, I'm a speed nut. Like I love race cars and stuff like that and I mm-hmm. enjoy going fast. And uh, I remember talking to uh, an Indy 500 driver back uh, years ago, gosh, this is so long ago, but I used to go back in the garage after the races. And I remember getting a chance to actually like talk to one of the drivers. I'm like, how do you do that, man? Like you're driving like 250 miles an hour or something like that around the track. I'm like, what's the deal? And he's like, it's all about fear. Like, he's like, you, you have this fear of what could happen. And then there's the fear of just like, or just coming, overcoming that fear and battling through it. And it's what gives you all the hindsight to see everything as it's happened before it even happens to be able to push through it and, you know, you know, try to win. And I'm like, Oh, that makes total sense. Like, you know, like, yeah, there's the fear portion of it, but there's also the, like, I can do this type of deal. And it's like, if you can't, if you can't balance both of those, then the fear is going to take over and you're going to crash. And he was mm-hmm. like, exactly. And I was like, all right, cool. Like, <laughs> like now I just want to go racing. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, let me in your cockpit. Let's do this thing, you know, kind of deal. Um, all right. So then it begs the question, what's the fastest you've gone in a, in a land vehicle? The fastest I've gone in a land vehicle. Uh, I have gone 125 miles an hour. Uh, it's which that was, actually- and you can do that in a sedan. What? You can. Yeah. I mean, you have to understand this was actually not my, this was, so I was at, I was, it was, it was your dad's car. <laughs> no, no. I was actually, I was at a convention in new Orleans. We won't name who or what, uh, I was at an invent. I was at a convention in new Orleans for dads and I got to test drive a stinger, a Kia mm-hmm. stinger, which is a really nice sports car. This thing does like zero to 60 and like 2.5, I think. And so it just like, I got up on the highway. We were supposed to just go around the corner to get beignets, but they were full. So I was like, ah, can I take it out on the highway? And they're like, yeah. And I got it up on the highway at like 60 immediately. And so it was me and another guy, uh, and we're going down the highway and I'm like, I feel like we're not even moving for 60 miles an hour. And I'm like, I was like, dude, I I looked over at my guy. I was like, do you trust me? And he was like, what are you about to do? And I'm like, (laughs) I'm about to see what this thing can really do. And he was like, all right. And so I just like slammed it, just hammer down. And we just took off and just whoosh, down the highway and there were walls on both sides. So I wasn't really concerned with any police officers. Cause like there wasn't any place for a police officer to sit, honestly. So it was going yeah, to yeah. be an aircraft cop if anything, but I went flying down the road and I, I'm pretty sure I topped out at like 125 or something like that. He's like, all right, that was good enough for me. You can back it down there. Back it down, <laughs> back it down. Yeah. Yeah. I had to look it up. The stinger is a nice looking car. So I could see. It is a very nice yeah. car. They, they made, they made a really nice car there. So, mm-hmm. yeah. So that's, I would say that's the fastest I have driven in a car personally, but I've also been in a Mustang with a buddy of mine and I'm pretty sure we've topped out like in the 200 easily flying down the highway in the morning hours before heading down to the Indy 500. Um, 
Mm -hmm. with nobody around. Like there was just, it was completely empty. I think we flew by, I think we flew by like one semi truck and that was it. (laughs) So we did that for maybe like two or three miles. And then we were like, well, we better back it down before some like state trooper like has a heyday with us. So yeah. Yeah. Yeah, You get to a, you get to a point where you see a vehicle you've got to get over because you're going so fast that you're going to hit it if you don't move before it, you know, before you get to it. So, yeah. So that's, that's probably the fastest I've gone, but it's cool. It's so much much fun. (laughs) I'd love to be able to do like a test drive on like an actual racetrack. I think that would definitely be a cool bucket list thing. So Mm -hmm. who knows in, in time there's, there's, there's always that opportunity at some point at one of the speedways. Mm -hmm. So, or, or Disney. Disney, they do that. They have now, now this was years ago, but when we went, they had a track outside of the park itself that you basically would sign up for and you could hear the cars going and that, that very, you know, and it's, uh, it's more stock car, um, racing than it is, you know, it's like NASCAR's NASCAR's yeah. cars, cars, uh, as opposed to formula one or anything like that. So it yeah, was not definitely that, you know, around. Yeah. 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 Um, but still. That's, That's cool. uh, that was tempting, but this was a long time ago and they may have taken that out or who knows, but I'm uh, pretty sure the Kentucky speedway down here still has like uh, at Sparta. I'm pretty sure they still have something. So it, mm-hmm. it'll be something that'll probably happen at a later date at some point. We'll see, <laughs> but yeah, man, I mean, I think it's all about, you gotta have fun. You gotta, you gotta find things to, to have fun doing as you get older. And like, mm-hmm. you know, I, I know that with like the passing of my grandfather, the talk of like fear of death and that stuff kind of came up at one point. And I was like, I don't, I don't fear death. Like I got nothing to fear on that. And I was like, I guarantee my grandfather wasn't fearing it at all. Like, honestly, I mean, Mm -hmm. he was very prepared for it in his own way, but um, you fear those things. And then it impedes being able to get to do other things in your life. And so you, you just got to bear down like too much time's wasted fearing on something. It, mm-hmm. it just eats away and you see that like that you know like i'm getting ready to do this five thousand mile road trip with my family this summer and there are times where i'm just like oh man like this is going to be so daunting and i you know there's this like little bit of fear that creeps up in you and you're just like no like this is going to be fun like yes it's going to be strenuous and there are going to be times where like you know the iron is going to sharp the iron in some ways on this but in the end like it's going to be such a great adventure to go on so Mm -hmm. that's that's the things you got to focus on in that situation yeah definitely with that one too is the memories is is what the kids will remember because they will and they'll think about it for the rest of their lives they'll always have that so that's cool yeah definitely so yeah i mean so that's that's pretty much what's been what's been going on um aside from that like i really i really enjoyed to kind of go back on some of the podcasts that we've done just recently like um, the podcast with, uh, with Mike, uh, yeah, yeah. so, uh, he actually had a big announcement last week and, uh, he's taking on a more permanent role with the morning show that he's been kind of subbing in and out cool. with. So, cool. yeah, so he's going to be on the radio regularly now in the mornings uh, for that. So I'm excited for him. That was really cool. Plus doing all the other stuff with the talk sports talk radio and stuff. So he's really gotten back behind the mic, uh, on a more full-time basis. Good so I'm for proud him. Of him. Yeah. Congrats, so, Mike. I hope so you hear this. Congratulations. Definitely. Yeah. So that was really cool to hear, uh, that I actually jumped on, uh, uh, his live when he announced it. So that was, uh, so that was cool to be on there for that. Um, and then, you know, talking to Joe and Jake about, uh, craft beer was, was a lot of fun. And, uh, mm-hmm. it was funny because we, you know, we posted that and one of the first comments that came out on Instagram was from Matt strain asking if we talked about non-alcoholic beers and I'm like, uh, no, we didn't get to that point. I think you froze up. I did. Yeah. But no, we were t- uh, Matt strain was one of the first, uh, guys on Instagram to comment and was all like, Hey, did you guys talk about non alcoholic beers? And I'm like, no, we didn't. And I'm thinking <laughs> to myself, I'm like, we just need to have an episode where we just have you come on and talk about craft non-alcoholic beers. I mean, he just actually, uh, announced that he is now, uh, an ambassador for athletic brewing, mm-hmm. which is really cool that he's doing that because their ambassadors are all like athletes. And he is not mm-hmm. an athlete. <laughs> no, no. Um, and so just how all that kind of came about, I actually pushed him a little bit to to make it happen because I felt like he would be really good for the company. And 
they uh, they finally like accepted him in as a as an ambassador. So it's it's pretty exciting to see the things that are going to be coming his way. But we'll have to have him on the show to talk non alcoholic craft beer, which. A lot of people probably are going really non-alcoholic craft beer. How does that taste like? <laughs> I kid you not. The flavor points on non-alcoholic craft beer are so on point. Aside from the fact that there's no alcohol in it, that is a really good drink for uh, just throughout the like during the daytime. Like honestly, <laughs> like mm-hmm. you know, you get guys that are like, "I just want a beer," like while I'm having lunch. Like this is like that is the perfect thing to have. Is just a non-alcoholic beer. Is the flavors all there? So. Um, that's basically, honestly, for me, like, that's what I want. I want the flavor, like the alcohol side of it yeah. is just a, a bonus, but that not necessarily needed. So, mm-hmm. um, well, good for Matt though, too. I'm glad yeah. to hear that he's, he's moving forward with that, with that, but i um, sorry. We didn't talk about it, Matt, but we did talk about beer. So <laughs> we're almost there. We're getting there. Right. We're getting there. Yeah. And, and Matt's been sober for gosh, I think eight years now or something like that. So it's, mm-hmm. he's, he's had quite a journey on that. So it's, it's, like I said, it's really excited to see where that's, where it's taken him to. Um, so yeah, so that's, I mean, other than that, we've got other things planned and we'll get some more, uh, guests in, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, home dad con it's coming around the corner. Uh, I pulled mm-hmm. up, I pulled up a little bit of a spoiler thing to talk about here without really dropping any, any names. Um, I can definitely tell you about some topics that are coming up uh, for that. So, of course, like we're going to have a couple mental health breakouts. Um, we're going to have a session on gaming. Um, I believe it's going to be more lined with video gaming, if I'm not mistaken, um, which is going to be neat. Uh, we've got a sex therapist coming in to talk about uh, sexual health and, re- and uh, relationships. Um, cool. I've got a buddy coming in to talk about road tripping with your kids. He's, he's been to like 38 States with an 84 Bonneville like station wagon. Wow. Yeah. And he's got a DIY teardrop trailer that he built. And so they go all over the place. And so he's coming to talk, which he's got a lot of expertise in that. He's been a stay at home dad for like 10 years. Um, And then we're going to have a, um, it's called how to pitch nearly anything to nearly anybody, uh, which is going to be really cool. Uh, this guy is going to come in and talk about just basically how to like sell yourself, uh, to, uh, either a brand or to maybe somebody that like an employer or something like that, you're trying to get a job, which I think is great for any stay at home dad that's trying to transition maybe out and into the, the marketplace workforce. Yeah, that's a great deal. idea. Yeah. yeah. So we'll have that. Um, got a dad coming in to talk about hunting with your kids and gun safety. And uh, this was something that I was really excited to see because even though you might not own a gun, um, there are times where you or your kids are going to be at a house where there could be a gun. And man, it is so important for kids to know what to do in that situation. Um, and you know, if they were to come across it for any reason. And and honestly, like any good gun owner is not going to have a gun out where a kid can find it, but you just never know with some kids who actually live in the house, what they're going to do from time to time, even though they've Mm -hmm. been probably educated and told not to get them out and show them off. Like there's some sort of like, Ooh, look at this type of deal. But, um, so he's going to, so one of the guys from here in town in Cincinnati is going to be coming to talk about that. So I'm excited to have him. We're going to have an author's panel, which is going to be really neat. So we'll have a, um, basically a group of guys who are going to talk about how they publish their books, um, how they've gotten, you know, their, their, their writings published, which is going to be really neat. Um, and then we've got, um, we've got some main, main speaker sessions that are going to be awesome. Um, you know, we're going to have uh, a dad and his, uh, trans, uh, son talking about the journey of uh, parenting a trans child and they're both coming to present. Um, and so that's going to be really exciting. I was, really pumped to get that one lined up. So that'll be really cool. Um, we're gonna be talking about kids and technology and, um, we're going to have a military veteran dad, uh, talking about, uh, trans basically how, uh, he's transitioned into being a stay at home dad and the things that he's mm-hmm. going through. So it's, it's going to be exciting, man. It's a two great yeah, days yeah. packed full of programming. I'm, I'm pumped to, to get it, get there here in the next uh, six months. That's great. And I'm very excited. Of course, I'm always excited about it. I love home dad gone, but uh, especially with the number of vaccines that are coming out and the way the rollout's going with that, I think, I think reasonably speaking, we'll be fine by, 
you know, by the, by the end of summer, probably. So yeah. I hopefully, love it. I really missed the, it last year. Hopefully the numbers will get a little bit bigger for what we can actually uh, occupy the room with. Cause right now it's smaller than what we'd like it to be um, mm -hmm. as a planning committee, but um, that's going to be sort of a, we have no control over that type of deal. We're just waiting to see what those numbers are yeah. going to be right now, but there's still tickets available which is good. So if you've gotten your vaccine and you're feeling like, Hey, like I want to come to this, get your ticket because yep. I can't guarantee that there are going to be very many tickets left, honestly, uh, when it all comes down to it. So, uh, I'd hate and for it, anybody to miss it. <laughs> and, it and if you're listening and you're on the fence at all, come on, just, just go, just go do it one time and you'll want to do it for the rest of your life. Yep. guaranteed well i can't guarantee it like but um, <laughs> but i know i would but uh i would if i could and i, I just get ready meet yeah. your tribe and get hugged that's, and if you're that's financially and if you're financially strapped by like i can't do this financially like i could get away but i can't financially pay for it like we've got a scholarship please sign up for it we've we've got the money to get you there and that's the one thing that we want to see more than anything is new mm -hmm. new guys who want to come and check it out like we've got a way for you so definitely yep. do that and you can you can either message us through the anchor app itself and we'll get in contact with you or you can go to at home dad.org and find the link or you can go to home dad and that's the main page that has all the information on it with hotels and you know, the cost and that kind of stuff right now. And there are still some uh, 25th anniversary tickets available, which don't mean anything as far as like, you're going to get anything special. It's just a, 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 it's a lower price than the regular registration price is what it comes down to. So um, definitely jump on that. Cause there's only like a few of those left. So you want to get, get that in there as well. But yeah, man, I'm looking forward to it. it. It's counting down. I was looking at the, I was looking at the calendar the other day and I'm like, wow, like, okay, so it's, it's the 13th now. So that means that you've got May, June, July, August, September, October, boom, like six months exactly to the day. We'll have mm -hmm. a group of guys, we'll have a group of guys from all over the country here in Cincinnati and uh, it's going to be, it's going to be awesome. So I'm, yeah, okay, I'm getting pumped. Six months to the day, that'll be the bourbon trip. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, I'm, I'm just putting it out yeah. there. Was just, oh, yeah. you know, six yeah, months yeah. to bourbon. Just, six, just six months to six months to the day of the road trip. <laughs> yeah. That, so that's kind of fun. Cause like, honestly, I feel like that's going to be like road tripping with home dad chat in a way, because I'm driving and you're driving. That's right. We're gonna have that's all right. the yahoos behind us. And, uh, <laughs> I, I've already heard that there's a few of them who are actually pay who are tipping us in bottles of bourbon. So uh, I'm excited Ooh, for that. I'd, I'd hate that. You're no, gonna, please. You're gonna you're Give gonna me another to... one. <laughs> but um, yeah, so it's going to be fun. Well, it, I, it is a sacrifice, I feel, you yeah. and I both, of I not having any of those samples while we're going. Now, I'm willing because I don't drink a lot. And when I do, I really like to take my time. And it would be, I'm an old man. So it'd be like three hours later, yeah. I'm halfway through my first. So I'm willing to drive for sure. I'm willing to do it just because I think everybody's going to have a blast. That's going to be a really, really cool, you know, kind of off. I don't want to say off the books, but off the schedule kind of get together with the other dads and just yeah. hang out and have a good time. So I, yeah, hope, more, I hope everybody can go with us. Yeah, it'll definitely be, uh, it'll definitely be fun. That's for sure. So, and uh, I, I'm, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. We can just eat all the bourbon balls, man. We'll have a good time with those. So <laughs> those, are, those are delicious. That's can I do that's, like bourbon balls. Those, those, you know, that's, that's some wonderful chocolate covered candy right there. So mm -hmm. <laughs> I've got to bring some of that back for my wife or else, you know, she might not let me back in the door. <laughs> that, that, and I've got to come home with a couple Woodford reserve, uh, candles for, so that the house smells like bourbon. <laughs> oh yeah. Nice. Those, yeah. The candles they're Yeah. Those are, that those sounds are, really good. Those are the perfect thing to buy and bring home because mm -hmm. in your house, it smells like the distillery pretty much the entire time. So, oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Remind me of that while we're up there, I'm definitely want to, I, wanna, I, I absolutely want to get at least <laughs> one of those, but like beside my desk or something, just so yeah. I can. Enjoy oh yeah. You don't it. even have to, you don't even have to light it. Like you just open it up and it'll just, just open it up. It's so powerful. <laughs> it just wafts throughout the house. Yeah. There are times where I'm like, I don't even light the thing. I'm just like, you just open it up and it just wafts throughout the house. You're like, this is awesome. So yeah. Cool. Cool. Cool, man. Well, this has been fun, but uh, of course we need to end it tonight and uh, get on with other things, but we'll, uh, we'll have you all back uh, in another week. 
and we'll have mm -hmm. more fun guests to talk about uh, different topics and things like that. And if you've got a topic or if you've got a question or comment, please, uh, please message us or comment on any of the social media posts that we put out there. But we really appreciate everybody has been listening and uh, we will talk to you real soon. Y'all have a good day. I'm a dad. That's what I do.